In Lesson 5.5, you will apply the remainder and factor theorems. In this lesson, we're going to divide polynomials. We're going to first use polynomial long division to divide this cubic by this quadratic. So we'll set it up for long division, x cubed plus 3x squared. And there is no x term, and I need to represent that degree, that term of first degree. So I'll put in 0x minus 7. Okay, we're going to divide by x squared minus x minus 2. Okay, to use long division, we want to ask ourselves, what are we going to multiply to x squared to get x cubed? And that would be x, so we put that up here, up top, and then distribute. x times x squared is x cubed. x times negative x is negative x squared. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. Now we're ready to subtract in long division, but in algebra we don't subtract, we add the opposite. So I'm going to change the signs and add. When I add this first column, x cubed and negative x cubed, I get 0, and that's what I want to happen. 3x squared plus 1x squared is 4x squared, and 0x plus 2x is 2x. Negative 7 plus 0 is negative 7. Then I go again. What do I multiply to x squared to get 4x squared? Well, that would be 4, positive 4. So I put it up in my quotient and I distribute. 4 times x squared is 4x squared. 4 times negative x is negative 4x. And 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So again, I'm ready to subtract, but I'm going to change the signs and add so that this first column sums to 0. 2x and 4x is a total of 6x, and negative 7 and positive 8 is positive 1. Once my remainder is 1 degree less than my divisor, then I know that uh, I'm done dividing. And the quotient is x plus 4 plus that remainder, 6x plus 1, over the divisor of x squared minus x minus 2. Okay, let's try polynomial long division again. Let's divide x plus 3 into this cubic, 3x cubed plus 17x squared plus 21x minus 11. Okay, every degree is represented, 3, 2, 1, 0, so we're ready to divide. So we ask ourselves, what are we going to multiply to x to get 3x cubed? Well, that would be 3x squared, so it goes up top. We distribute. 3x squared times x is 3x cubed, and 3x squared times 3 is 9x squared. We're ready to subtract, but in algebra we add the opposite, so I'm going to change the signs and add. I get 0 in the first column. 7x squared minus 9x squared is 8x squared plus 21x minus 11. Then I go again. What do I multiply to x to get 8x squared? Well, that would be positive 8x. So I put it up in my quotient and I distribute. 8x times x is 8x squared. 8x times 3 is 24x. I'm ready to subtract, so I change the signs and add. I get 0 in the first column. 21x and negative 24x is negative 3x minus 11. So I can go one more time. What do I multiply to x to get negative 3x? That would be negative 3. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x and negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. So now when I change the signs and add, I get 0 in the first column. Negative 11 and positive 9 is negative 2, so my remainder is negative 2. So I'll write my quotient, 3x squared plus 8x minus 3 minus this remainder of 2 divided by the divisor, x plus 3. 
Okay, there's another method for uh, dividing polynomials. It's our synthetic substitution that we used before. It's known as synthetic division. We can only use it when we're dividing by a divisor of the first degree, a linear divisor of the form x minus k. So to use synthetic division, our k value is 3. We divide 3 through the coefficients of our polynomial. So the coefficients are 2, 9, 14, and 5. Remember, every degree has to be represented 3, 2, 1, 0. So to synthetically divide, I put down a 0 and I add that first column. Then I multiply. 3 times 2 is 6. That goes here. And I add. 9 and 6 is 15. Then I multiply. 3 times 15 is 45. And I add this column. 59. And I multiply. 3 times 59. 27 looks like 177. And I add, getting 182, which remember is our remainder. So now <clears throat> my quotient is right here on the bottom line, and it's one degree less than the dividend that we divided into. So it's going to be 2x squared plus 15x plus 59 plus that remainder of 182 divided by the divisor x minus 3. Let's go back and use synthetic division on this same problem that we already solved with uh, long division. Remember our um, divisor is x minus k, so our k value in this case the value that's subtracted from x is negative 3. So it's negative 3 that we want to synthetically divide through those coefficients of 3, 17, 21, and negative 11. Every degree is represented 3, 2, 1, 0. So we put down a 0 and we add that first column. Then we multiply. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. And we add, getting 8. We distribute or we multiply negative 3 times 8 is negative 24. And we add and we multiply. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. So when I add, I find I have a remainder of negative 2. And I can write my quotient again. Remember the coefficients of my quotient are on the bottom line here. One degree less than the dividend, the polynomial that I divided into. So it's 3x squared plus 8x minus 3 minus that remainder of 2 over the divisor of x plus 3. So you can see whether we used um, long division or synthetic division, we were able to get the same result. Okay, we can use our synthetic division to solve problems like this where we are given a factor of f of x Factor f of x equals 2x cubed minus 11x squared plus 3x plus 36 completely, given that x minus 3 is a factor. So we're going to factor f of x, like it says, completely. And we already know that one of those factors is x minus 3. So we can take that k value of 3. This is a, a factor. And we're going to divide that polynomial, that cubic, by this factor. So our k value is 3, and we'll synthetically divide 3 through the coefficients of the polynomial. Coefficients are 2, negative 11, 3, and 36. So I'll put down a 0, because every degree was represented 3, 2, 1, 0. I'll add this first column, and I'll multiply. 3 times 2 is 6. I'll add and get negative 5. I'll multiply 3 times negative 5 as negative 15. And I'll add, getting negative 12. And multiply 3 times negative 12 as negative 36. Now because that was a factor, I'm getting a remainder of 0. I need to get a remainder of 0. This is the quotient that I have on the bottom line here. And it's 1 degree less than that uh, dividend. So it's 2x squared 
minus 5x minus 12. We want to factor completely, and this trinomial is of the second degree, so we need to see if we can factor that trinomial now into a binomial times a binomial. So I'll factor 2x squared into 2x times x. 2x times x is 2x squared. I'll factor negative 12, and I'll factor it into 3 times 4 because if I make 8x negative and 3x positive, I'll get that negative 5x in the middle. And positive 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. So that function, that polynomial function, is completely factored into three linear factors. Okay, we can also solve this problem. 1, 0 of f of x equals x cubed plus x squared minus 16x minus 16 is 4. Find the other zeros. So to find the zeros of this function, we want to factor it completely. And then let y equal 0 and use the zero product property to solve. So we're given 1, 0. So that 0 belongs in this factor, x minus 4. So we'll take that 4 again, that 0, and we'll divide it into the coefficients, 1, 1, negative 16, and negative 16. Every degree is represented, 3, 2, 1, 0. So we'll synthetically divide, we'll add and multiply, add and multiply, 4 times 5 is 20, adding this column I'm getting 4, and 4 times 4 is 16. So I do get my remainder of 0, which I must get if that's going to be a factor of the polynomial. x minus 4 is a factor. Here's my quotient, my trinomial that I get as a result of synthetic division. 1x squared plus 5x plus 4. Okay, and I need to factor completely and then use the uh, zero product property, so I'll factor that trinomial into a binomial times a binomial. Factors of x squared go first, x times x. Now I want factors of 4 that will add to give me 5. That's going to be 1 and 4, make them both positive. So that positive 1x in the middle added to positive 4x on the outside is equal to positive 5x in the middle, and positive 1 times positive 4 is positive 4. So my polynomial equation is completely factored. I let y equal 0, and now I can use the zero product property to find those zeros or x-intercepts. So I'll set all the factors, all three factors equal to 0, and solve for x. So solving for x, we get that first 0 of 4, which was given. We get negative 1 as a second 0, and the third 0 to this cubic equation is negative 4. Include with your notes of this video guided practice problems 1 through 7 odd found on pages 363 to 365 of your textbook.